I now request Dr. Vinod Shastri sir to address the audience. Very good morning once again, and uh, uh, thank you so much to Sansta and HNIMR for inviting me as a keynote speaker. Ma'am uh, spoke so beautifully, she said, I mean, she won't give you a lecture because she is not a lecturer. By that logic, I being a lecturer, I probably need to give you a lecture. Right? I'll of course try avoiding that. Right? Okay, so thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sunya, Dr. Mihika. Uh, for this honor and this is very nostalgic because you know when I was with Badwani Foundation uh, I, I used to visit HNIMA very frequently and uh, it has been quite some time, almost a decade. So it's a wonderful feeling to be back here and uh, I, I also you know must thank the organizers for making my already special day even more special by inviting me and you know, giving me this honor. Uh, so you must be wondering you know why this is a special day for me. So in my introduction you heard that you know I conceived and co-founded Yorkshire. Uh, it's an egg specialty restaurant in Pune. So today Yorkshire completes its 13 year journey. And uh, <laughs> to have an easy journey. And it could have uh, you know died a premature death during COVID but somehow we survived to see this day. So that journey is something that has really you know taught me something about business management. Of course, with due respect to all the education that I got, but the true uh, education of business management probably came from you know, running that organization, though remotely, right? And uh, I quite uh, you know, remember one particular day, I'm sure you know, everybody likes stories, so you know, some stories from this journey. So I think it was, not I think, I know for sure, because you know, before I came here, I published my uh, latest blog post which starts with that particular incident. So it was on uh, 9th June of 2016 and I was about to you know, leave for uh, symbiosis. I used to work with symbiosis at that time. So I was about to leave, it was about 8, 8.15 uh, in the morning and I got a call from one of our employees and uh, he said that, you know, uh, we want you to come here, you know, at the outlet. We have this outlet at Karishma Society and he said, that, you know, only after you come here we'll open the shutters and usually the restaurant opens at 7 o'clock and the shutters are up by about 6.30 for the preparations and 7 o'clock we are ready to serve and 8 o'clock these guys are calling me you know unless you come here we will not open the shutters and I was absolutely shocked I mean anyways you know I was not somebody who ran the restaurant okay I mean we have three partners and uh, one of the partners was taking care of it, but generally it was all managed by the employees. So I said, I just cannot come now because you know we, we, we were having our orientation program at Symbiosis that day. And I was the deputy director and I, I just couldn't you know, skip that event. So I said, I just can't come now, but you know that you know, whatever it is, I'll solve it. So you just start because I'm sure that you know, already some of the customers must have gone back, which is not nice for the brand. So you please open it, I'll be there by 10.30 and we'll sort out whatever it is. But tell me what is the problem. They said, we're not telling anything. You come here and then we'll speak. So I, I went to, you know, Symbiosis, I finished my thing and I was on my way and at 10.30 I get a call. Where are you? You haven't yet reached. And uh, so anyways, I did reach by about 10.45. And then they said, you know, it's either, okay, I'm changing the name. It's either Kiran or us. So Kiran, name change, was the general manager we had appointed on 1st June. So it was just 8 days. And that was the ninth day. So I said, it's either him or us. You choose. And it was a tough call. Because you know, it's not like that Kiran had approached us. I had personally approached him. Because you know, he was running the cafe of his own and which had to close down for some reason. But I knew that you know he was doing a decent job. So I, re I had reached out to him, found him out, and I offered him a job. So, you know, we we don't really you know interfere in this you know, business really. We let the employees run the show. So I hope you know you'll enjoy this. So he had joined us, you know, with stars in his eyes, and we tried reasoning with our staff. We we tried to you know investigate what happened really. Even till this day, we don't know exactly what transpired. I'll be very honest. But it was 
yeah, you could call it as blackmail, but uh, our staff said, that, you know, we are not going to work with this guy. This guy offered that, you know, give me three days, I'll change the entire staff and get all new people. Just give me three days. And I'll run this. I mean, people can't be blackmailing you like this. But anyways, I don't know, you know, whether we did the right thing or the wrong thing. We said sorry to Kiran. We said, you move on. We gave him three months salary, which was extremely tough for us in those days. But we did that and we just went by the people who were with us from day one. That was in 2010. So when I look back, I think one of the things or you know, one of the learnings that comes out is we were very hands off. You know, I went to the restaurant maybe when I wanted to eat really, not to run the show. Because we truly trusted uh, our employees and we said, you know, you run the show. Because we were not in it for money in any case. We of course wanted it to be successful, but we were not in it for money, all three partners. They didn't like being managed. They just wanted to manage themselves. That's what, you know, when I look back, that's what I feel. And I think that's true of today as well. We are today talking about, you know, recent trends in business management. And if that was true in 2016, that is truer today. Right? So that's my learning. I'm not really advising because you know what worked for us may not really work for somebody else. And and particularly the, the incident I told you, we may have been wrong. I really don't know. If you ask Kiran, then he's going to curse us. And in fact, I told you, you know, today I published my latest blog post, and it starts with what he said to us. He said, I'm sorry to say this, but you guys don't know how to run your business. You don't dump a general manager because your dishwashers, cooks, and waiters tell you so. But that's what we did. So I think it, it's not really you know, about managing people anymore. So when we speak of business management, we are not talking about managing people. What probably we do need to manage these days is technology because uh, she just also mentioned about chat GPT. Of course, it's three now and maybe you know, going four and five. In fact, uh, yesterday itself, uh, we had invited, we means uh, I, I am representing Bennett University today. And so uh, the Times Group, in, incidentally, it's a Times of India group entity. So the Times Group had yesterday invited uh, Sam Altman, the founder of chat GPT. And uh, he did mention uh, that you know, not maybe up to uh, GPT-5, but by GPT-10, it's quite likely that the world will change, and it might actually eat up lots of jobs, and we may have to you know think different. So I think it's not about managing people anymore; it's about managing technology. So uh, again, you know, the chief just did mention about Italy, some of the universities, or I don't know whether it's all the universities or some of the universities in Italy banning chat GPT. I think that's not going to work. And uh, I think everybody here who has used chat GPT or maybe BARD or any other, you know, AI tool would agree that, you know, these tools are there to help us. Of course, you know, if we can't manage them, then they may eat us up. That's true. But that's true of anything else. That's true of other people. That's true of our own colleagues and that's true of maybe even our family members, right? So that, that principally there's no real uh, difference in that sense is the way I see it. So it's, I think it's about managing technology and not so much about managing people. People don't like that, right? And I, I have of course you know, worked in multiple organizations in multiple capacities and another thing that I have you know, learned. So I'm sharing just my learning. As I said, you know, everybody's learning may be very unique, and whatever works for you, you can take from there. Is what you really give people is the vision, not necessarily the targets. People again resent being given targets because you know, you, you may give say X target to somebody, but that person may be good enough for X plus Y, and we don't know the value of Y. It's only that person who knows it. And conversely, the person may be you know, good enough for X minus Y. By giving an X target, we're actually making life difficult for that person. 
So I, I personally believe that it's good enough, and this I'm speaking out of practice. But because as I said, there are no 13 years of our business has been almost entirely hands off. As far as I am concerned, because it's my concept, I conceived the uh, you know idea. I brought together two other partners and formed that team. So as far as I am concerned, as a conceiver and founder, it has been completely hands off. I, I would rather take failures and losses in my stride than be very hands on. That's my way, of course. You know. Again, I'm not uh, insisting that others should probably do it. So, uh, in terms of recent trends, uh, uh, from a very personal perspective, has been that you know, you you don't manage people really. You manage technology. You what you do is you manage the vision, not the targets. Let the people decide their own targets. As long as you've given them an inspiring enough vision, not intimidating but also not a very casual kind of an image. So as long as we are able to do that, give an inspiring vision, I think people will take care of their targets. And our people have surprised us. They've always you know, delivered more than we, what we thought in that hands-off mode. Yeah, hands-on mode might have been different. I, I really don't know. And then it's also about managing expectations. So we have managed our expectations. We have not uh, you know, expected to become a unicorn in maybe five years. We, we never really expected ourselves to do that. What we did expect was we wanted to be loved by people. In fact, even this blog post that I've said, uh, I just mentioned about, I mentioned that part. For most people won't believe this, okay? Most people who have done business or have been part of, you know, businesses integrally, maybe as, you know, uh, p and owners, won't believe this. But as a restaurant, we made losses for 40 months on trot. The first 40 months, we were making losses. No restaurant actually continues for 40 months without making profit. Typically, it is six months. If you don't start making money in six months, you would have seen, how many of you have seen restaurants being closed down in about six to eight months? Can you please raise your hands? Some restaurant. Exactly. So you would typically see restaurants coming up and closing down in six months because if they can't make money, they just cannot sustain. But we sustained for 40 long months. A stupidity. By any normal standards, it's a stupidity. But why we continue? Because we manage our own expectations. What, what were the expectations that we had from our own self? Our customers should love us. We saw that the same customers kept coming back. Some kept coming daily, some kept coming weekly, some kept coming monthly, and some made it a point that whenever they are in Pune, they would visit your chair. I'm not saying we are the best. There are of course better people, much better people. But we have our own set of loyal customers, and they simply love to come to us. So that's what we expected from ourselves. So, I, and I am seeing this happening, you know, when I look at the students, and of course, you know, so many students are sitting here, most of you either don't have a sibling, or you don't have more than one sibling, right? So the way you have been brought up today is very different. You can't really take, okay, I'm not using that word, but you know what I mean. You can't take it from anywhere. You didn't take it from your parents, and you won't take it from your bosses. So there's nothing like a boss. So you won't think twice before quitting a job if you are being directed. So I think people who enjoy and continue in a job, whatever profession they're doing, if they're allowed to manage themselves, so the recent trends in business management, I'm, I'm you know, keeping on coming back to the theme, is this is what I'm seeing. It's hands off. You give vision and just forget about you know, how it is to be achieved. Let them figure it out. People don't like to be told how to do things, is what I've observed. They feel disrespected. They say, I know how to do my job. Just tell me what you want. What do you expect? And that's good enough. 
But that, of course, as I said, you know, needs to be inspiring. So these are some of the learnings that I have got through this journey and, of course, the other journey as well. But I just cannot go all over the place. So I thought, you know, I'll stick to this particular part of my life and draw lessons from there. So managing expectations of all stakeholders. So whether it's the employees, whether it's, uh, you know, the customers, whether it is the co-founders. So managing expectations is definitely a big deal. As long as we are able to figure that out, I think the other things will fall in place. So uh, our employees knew that, you know, even though the business is making losses, because they were the ones, you know, who were, who were running the business and depositing the money in the bank. So they knew exactly what's happening. But we always paid them bonuses despite making losses. Because that's their expectation. As an employee, that's always the expectation that come Diwali, they would want a bonus. So that expectation had to be managed despite losses. So I'm just giving you, you know, some uh, examples of each of the things that I'm talking about, right? So chat GPT, uh, again, you know, coming back because I said we have to manage technology. So these days, suddenly, the quality of emails that we receive from students has improved. It has improved so much that you know, we are now reading Victorian English. <laughs> and the other day, I, I was so tempted to you know, reply to the mail saying that, you know, dear chat GPT. Oh, I'm sorry, Amit, you're joking now. And our registrar also received a similar mail, long one really, you know. The, otherwise the guy cannot speak English. Really. The name is so beautifully drafted. And I, I uh, wrote to the registrar saying that, ma'am, eat ka jawab patra se do, aap baar se likhwa. Chai chit pe se mat likhwa, aap baar se likhwa, I said. So that, that's, uh, you know, how the world around us has changed, for sure. And uh, that's how we can probably respond. And everybody may find one's own unique way. Uh, and, and that's, I think, the beauty of the world today. That you don't really have to go maybe by, uh, we were you know, speaking before the session started about how you know, we, are, we have been teaching Kotler and we have been teaching you know, theories of Western academicians and researchers and consultants which may not necessarily be relevant to India. Very similarly, anything that I tell you may not be relevant in your organization, your walk of life and your own style of managing things. So I think it's about finding our own niche and sticking to that believing uh, that you know, this is going to work for me. And that's the beauty of it. That, that actually you know, uh, kind of liberates us. And uh, finally, I might say that you know, I mean, what, what we have done is not really managed the people, but we have led them. Sometimes by example, sometimes by you know, just giving the liberty and the freedom. And uh, I'm sure that you know, particularly uh, the way Guest of Honor Shefadi Ma'am has inspired you with uh, beautiful words, beautiful thoughts, and uh, beautiful advices. Uh, really, I mean, inspiring not just for women, but for all of us. And uh, I once again thank the organizers for, as I said, making my special day, already special day, very special. And isn't it great that you know, there are three speakers, but and it's an all-women institute, and I get to have the last word. <laughs> what else can I ask? Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. It was great to know the journey behind Yorkshire, where I have been visiting for past so many years and wish to visit there many more times.